Alright, hi everyone! Welcome and welcome to our brush calligraphy introduction here at Omomo. My name is Morel and I will be uh, the one who will be teaching you the basics of uh, brush calligraphy. I hope you're all excited. And what's going to happen today is I will teach you these fundamentals of brush calligraphy so that you can practice on your own afterwards. You will be having a replay as well, so don't worry if you miss some parts. But I do hope that you'll be staying soon with us um, for an hour and we're going to have some fun. So what we're going to do is I'm going to sit on the chair and we'll be having our desk so you can see how I write. And maybe if you have some questions, you can type it on, um, on the comment section and you can also uh, message us later on. All right. So before we dive into letters, I'm going to teach you first the basic strokes because that's the most important thing that you have to practice when you're starting out with brush calligraphy. So these strokes, these are the ones that you have to put together and that will make up your letters and also uh, make up your words. Lots of choices on the pen that uh, we showed you. And here in Momo, when you go here under stationary section, they have lots of brush pens. So what you just want to uh, secure is something like this. So this one is um, a felt tip pen, All right? So it has a very flexible tip. And it shouldn't be broad. It should, it should just be something like this. And when you put pressure on it, when you write down, you will see that it's giving you like a nice thick line. So your, your thin line, just like this area over here and here, the thin lines, to produce that, it means that your letters or your, I mean, your, your, your stroke is going upwards, all right? So there is no pressure on your pen. That's why you have a thin line. And that's what you call an upstroke because it's going upward, right? And the thick line are those that are going down, just like this area over here, right? This shaded area. So those are your thick lines. And that is going down your paper, moving towards you. And that is thick. And now, how do you produce that? So this thin line is what you call upstroke. And this thick line is what you call a downstroke, right? So that's the term that we use, upstroke and downstroke. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna show you the basic strokes, the most important ones that you have to learn. And as I mentioned, these are the ones that you have to put together to form your letter. Okay, so. Uh, the first stroke is your downstroke. So how do you do a downstroke? So the downstroke starts uh, just below the ascender line up here. And then you're going to uh, put pressure and you're going to pull down towards the baseline. And when you pull down, you have to make sure that there's just equal pressure so that you have this nice, consistent downstroke. So I'm going to start on the top, press, and then pull it down and then lift. That's your downstroke. So we'll do another one. Press, consistent pressure, and then pause, then lift. So there's stroke, and that's where you're going to begin. So for the upstroke, we are starting from the baseline, right? So um, from the down, from the baseline, we're going up with a slightly curved line, and we're going to stop just before your ascender line. So if you do that, start here. And it's just the tip of my felt that's touching the paper and I'm going up like that. Or upstroke. From the baseline, you're going up with an upstroke and then turn. Once you turn, you're gradually putting pressure and then lift at the bottom. So what's happening here is that there is no pressure here. And then you're gonna turn first and then around two o'clock, you're gonna put pressure. So this pressure here, it's important to know that it should be a gradual pressure, all right? It shouldn't be abrupt because of course it's not gonna look nice. So you want like a tapering kind of, um, of stroke in here. So you have to gradually put pressure. And then of course this area over here, it started to give you like an equal pressure already. So just continue with that until you reach the bottom and you reach the baseline, and then you pause and lift, all right? So that is your overcurve. And then now we're gonna do an undercurve. Undercurve 
is just the opposite of your over curve. And we're starting with a down stroke and looping going up back on a parallel up stroke. So we're starting here. I'm going to make it bigger again so you can see it on your screen. So down stroke. And before you reach the bottom, you're going to release the pressure gradually. And as you go up, it's an upstroke. So I'll do it again. It's hard when you're talking and writing at the same time. And then you go up like that. So if you analyze it, of course, this is a downstroke. And then in this area over here, that's where you start releasing the pressure. Once you start, once you touch the baseline, there should be no pressure anymore because you're looping back up. And then finish it with an upstroke, going straight up to where you started your stroke. Now uh, we go to the next one, which is your compound curve. This is just a combination of your over curve and under curve, right? So you, you've known that those two already. So we're just going to combine it in one stroke. And I'm going to make it bigger at the bottom so you can see we're starting with an over curve, up stroke, and then go down and then release the pressure again. And then now I'm making the under curve, right? It's something like this. So if I'm going to make it small, just like what we have in our example, you're starting with an up stroke, curve on the waistline, press. Pressure, release before you reach the bottom, and then go up. So there now, our next stroke is your pressure release. This is just like your over curve, oh sorry, under curve, but a little bit taller, and you're just stopping in the waistline. So it's just a combination of a down stroke, and then release the pressure gradually, loop back with an up stroke like this. Right, so if I cut this over here, this is just your undercurve. So, and now the next one is your ascending loop. So the ascending loop is uh, a good four letters, H, B, K, those kind of letters. So what we have here is also a downstroke and an upstroke com combining, but we're starting first with your upstroke. And I'm starting that in the middle of the X side. So I'm making an upstroke, and then I'm looping back down. And once I loop down, that's where I gradually put pressure and do a downstroke. Right? I'll do it again. Upstroke. Loop to the left. And then down with a downstroke. So this is how now your descending loop. I hope you're able to remember everything. <laughs> well, you, you do have the the term on your worksheet as well, so you won't be able to forget that. So the ascending loop is pretty much like the letter J, but it's not the letter J yet. It doesn't have an entry stroke and a dot. And what's happening here is that it's going down the descender area. So you're starting with a downstroke, and then you're gradually removing the pressure before you loop, loop up with an upstroke. Okay, so let's do it again from the waistline. Put pressure, equal pressure, release the pressure before you turn. Turn and making sure that it's an upstroke, no pressure, and that's your descending loop. So if I do this here at the bottom, you want to make sure I'm not out of frame. Okay, so from the waistline, release the pressure, loop back. And that's your descending loop, okay? So you, ha you have to make sure you, uh, you breathe <laughs> when you do this. And there's a different way of doing it. Sometimes some people would do like an oval like this, right? And that's totally fine. But my technique is I start around two o'clock of the X height at the top. I don't start on the very top just because I find that there's more continuity, fluidity when you do that. So when you, I'm going to make it bigger. I'm going to write it bigger so you can see it as well. So I'm starting here with, uh, with an upstroke and the upstroke is looping to the left. So starting here, no pressure, loop. After looping, I gradually put pressure, equal pressure, 
and then I'll release the pressure before I reach the baseline. And then I'm going up for my upstroke. And then I'm meeting where I started. So that is how your oval should look like. It's like not on calligraphy books or on formal training in calligraphy. But when I was starting out, I was really having a hard time with the letter P. Thus, it's, um, I call it the petal stroke because it looks like a petal and it started with the letter P. Letter P was my nemesis letter. I was really, I was really having a hard time writing it. So um, I tried to break it down. When you're having a hard time writing a letter, you have to break it down into strokes. That's how you're going to figure it out. So this one is just like a petal starting from the baseline. So I'm going to draw a petal, still applying, wherein if it's a downstroke, it's obviously a thin line, a thick line, and then I'm just making an exit stroke. All right, so again, like a petal, and then I'm just exiting. Okay, so guys, that is all the foundational strokes. We, I, I taught you 10 basic strokes, and these are really, seriously, all you need to master. And you'll be able to write any lowercase letter that you want. The first, um, the first one that I showed you is the oval. Oh, sorry, not the oval. The over curve and under curve, right? So let's say the letter M. The letter M is just a combination of upstroke and then a downstroke. Sorry, let me just position my paper. Upstroke, downstroke, and then an over curve and a compound curve. All right, so these are the four strokes that you have to put together. And in between the strokes, you have to lift your hand. I know it could be tiring at first, but when, you're, um, when your muscles are used to it, it, you won't really like notice it anymore. So you want to make sure that you really pause in between because that will make your letters more beautiful. So when I write this, I'm going to go for an upstroke, pause, or lift my pen, downstroke, lift my pen again. And from the baseline, I'm going to do my first over curve and then lift again. And then my second over curve, which is also a compound curve. Right, so if I do this in color, it's gonna look like this. So I'm just changing the color, so you will see, um, you'll, you'll see it better where I lift my pen. So this is my first stroke. I lift my pen, down stroke, lift my pen. From the baseline, first over curve, I lift my pen, and then second, your compound curve, and then you. Let's say the word Japan. I'll do first my entry stroke, lift my pen, and then my descending loop. Now my next letter is A, that's why I bring my exit stroke over here. I lift my pen. I'm not gonna make, I'm not gonna make the entry stroke of the letter A anymore because it's already here. So what I'm gonna go next is the oval of the letter A. So I'm gonna bring my pen away so that I have enough space for my oval and the side of the oval is just touching the exit stroke of the J. So oval and then lift because I'll be changing my pen and because it's a new stroke. So the next stroke for the letter A again, pressure release. Now my next letter is P. So obviously I'm gonna bring this up here and I'm gonna lift my pen and do the next stroke. My next stroke is P. I'm not gonna do this anymore because it's already here. So I'm gonna start with the next stroke, which is the down stroke. And then lift my pen, reset, and then I'll go with the next one, which is your petal stroke. Start at the baseline. And I know that my next letter is the letter A. So I'm gonna bring my exit stroke in the middle I'm not going to bring it all the way up because if I bring it all the way up, it's not going to have a, like a really nice look. Or obviously, if I go down, it's also not like a, a natural way of connecting it. So bringing it in the middle, it's just fine. Then I lift my pen and I'm going to write the oval separately, touching the exit stroke and lift my pen again, do my next stroke. Now, my next letter is N. So again, I know that 
I can bring this all the way up over here. You can bring it all the way up and continue with the first stroke or you can pause and you can do the first stroke of the letter N, sorry, second stroke, because you already are not gonna write this entrance stroke. And then lift my pen and then over curve and then exit, making your letter happy. Then go back and do your dots and your T's. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's how you connect the letters, right? To form words. So um, what I suggest is that before you get into this, master first the basic strokes. And then after that, go and practice the letters, the lowercase alphabet. And then after that, that's the time you can go and really get full throttle on connecting your letters because it's gonna be uh, frustrating if you go straight to writing your letters and you really don't know the forms of each stroke yet. Uh, stay safe, guys. Thank you so much for everyone who tuned in today and we'll see you again next time. Bye.